Good morning, everyone. Going live this morning. I had an opportunity and thought I would share a few things. And so I know a lot of times um, I, you know, have various things to talk about and always interesting. Um, but I get questions a ton, a ton of questions about from flower farmers, what to grow, what am I looking for, and different things. And so I had a local flower farmer bring me some product yesterday, and I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about the product they brought and show you kind of what I'm looking for uh, when I talk to local flower farmers. And so I'd love also your feedback. So wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing in the world, um, I would love it if, you know, if there's something that you wish local flower farmers would grow that you would put it in the notes because I'd love to see it in the comments. Um, also, I, um, if you have any questions, you can use the bubble at the bottom or put it in comments. I know sometimes the bubble is easier to see if there's very many comments. So this is all um, about some different flowers that I received um, and just talking about local flowers and where, what are we looking for um, as florists, as wholesalers, and because we, especially this week, I don't know if you've been following the news, um, but there's a lot of strikes going on in uh, Ecuador, which of course have disrupted the whole supply chain and so now more than ever uh, relationships with local flower farmers is really important and so from the flower farming standpoint I just want to show you kind of what I look for uh, in product and what maybe could be helpful and if you've got comments thoughts or suggestions I'd love to, to see that and so um, anyway I just wanted to share a little bit about that so to start off with um, one thing that is in season right now as we're speaking and let me dig this out of this bucket here um, and this is a crop that is very popular and among all the foodies out there and that is blueberries so hopefully you can see them uh, of course you can't cut blueberries blue so if you often wondered why can't I get cut blueberries it's because they would just fall off when they get ripe. they just completely fall off and then that would not be good. It'd be messy for things like tablecloths or different furniture, or it would um, just be disappointing because you have this design with berries falling everywhere. But if you can cut them in sort of this celadon green stage, then that flower here, let me push this back over here just a little bit. Then that flower, or that berry, sorry, will hold on a whole lot longer. Like I think this is over a week, been cut for over a week. Um, actually this might actually be two weeks old and so it ripens a whole lot slower and is not nearly um, as uh, doesn't ripen nearly as quickly and so the other thing is foliage and so when you're cutting for cut berries like this you know people want the berries and so if you're cutting it with a lot of foliage on top that is fine for bigger installations because sometimes you really want the foliage but I would say that you really want the berries to be more pronounced. Now this branch, it's like they're all right there at the end and that's kind of unusual, but you get the idea. You want to see the berries. That's why you're cutting this. And so you want to be sure that if you're cutting this for a florist or cutting this for uh, a wholesaler like you're selling to, that they're repurposing it, then this is really important. Now, if you are making a bouquet and you're doing it for market and you wanted to put some of this in, then obviously when you put it in a sleeve, those berries come back up on top a little bit. And so that can kind of work. So there are different functions within uh, each branch. You might be able to utilize it depending on who you're selling it to. So that's just some feedback I wanted to give on blueberries. Um, it's a great crop and it's one of those crops that, especially if you're a farm, like a bigger scale farm, and you have areas to devote to woodies, then you can get a blueberry crop out of it and you can get cut blueberries out of it too. So both are, are really important and really good and gives you a diversity of income. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you 
and uh, as, as something to kind of look forward to. Um, but anyway, so if you're just joining, I uh, wanted to talk about some of the flowers that I have local flower farmers bring me that a lot of times people want to know, what am I looking for, what to grow. If there's a local bloom that you want to see grow that you haven't seen in your area, then please put it in the comments because I'd love to talk about it. So a flower that is really popular, um, especially in wedding work, and I've got a couple different things here. Let me turn this bucket so I can get to it is Veronica. So typically Veronica, uh, typically Veronica is a 10 stem bunch that when we get it in, whether it's wherever it's from, uh, from Europe, from South America, even from California, it's a 10 stem bunch. And so I just kind of wanted to show you what I was brought. And so now this may just be starting. So they, and these are samples. So I don't expect everything to be perfect, but I just wanted to give you some feedback. So this is a, a blue or purple Veronica and they brought me a five stem bunch, which is okay. And perf again, I would prefer to get a 10 stem bunch when I'm actually paying for it. But I would tell you that look at these branches on it. And you see how there's a lot of different flower heads. Sometimes people get nervous and they want to let all of these side shoots open up. And you can't do that because this main flower will be gone by the time this happens because this opens first and these open second. And you don't want to bring in a flower with this big hole or dead center unless you're in a deadhead it, which some people could do. And there are some spray types of Veronica. But the nice thing about having all those little tiny shoots is it makes the bunches seem fuller, which is not something you see out of South American product. So if you are trying to get the most price for your product, then this is definitely um, a great quality product because it looks so much fuller. Now here's the white version, and you can see the white also has some side shoots on it. But this is the perfect cut stage. I don't know if you can see it really well, but these lower blooms have just started to open up and now you see it trailing off into buds. This is gonna to continue to open up for your customers. These little side sheets probably really won't do anything, um, but this right here is definitely the perfect cut stage. So good quality stems, really strong stems, and with that branching, you can see where if you were to do the 10 stem bunch, it's a good sized bunch. I mean, this is comparable, if not better, than most of the product coming out of South America. And that's the thing when you're trying to really go to a wholesaler or a florist and sell your local flowers, you really want to make your product look better, way better, not just the same, but better. And that's one way you can kind of get more money for it. Because I know a lot of times, I mean, what I pay for this kind of a product is uh, not, not a whole lot, but I'd be willing to pay more for a product that looks full and healthy and has beautiful green foliage and has good stem length. I mean, it's really nice. So anyway, so that's Veronica. Um, and if you're not growing this as a cut flower, uh, because you know, maybe the market price isn't there or maybe it's, uh, you know, for whatever reason, um, this is really, really a good quality flower and I would grow that locally. That was the one thing about this grower when they brought me stuff. I was kind of like surprised at some of the things they brought me. So the next flower I want to show you is a flower that is definitely not on my favorite list. Uh, and I don't know if it's just that the wire services over the years have just ruined it for me or what it is, but that flower is status. And so status is one of those filler flowers that just doesn't excite me very much. Here, I'm going to send out some waves to some people. Hey, Tracy. Um, it's always good to see everybody. Um, and so, okay. So again, this is a five stem bunch. And for local status, this has got to be the prettiest I've ever seen. You know, they're cutting it when it's all open. There's really not a lot of tight buds. Here, let me see if I can pull a stem out. So you can see where all there's good flower coverage all throughout the stem. A lot of times, 
uh, when local growers are bringing beef product, they cut it. They're, first of all, I think they're just so excited and anxious, but I think that a lot of times they end up not, they cut it too soon. And so you really want the flowers to really develop on this. So if you can kind of see how that is. So they brought me that and then they brought me some white. And again, this is cut at the best, I mean, this is some of the prettiest status I've seen from local flower farmers. Um, now, I will say as a flower buyer, a lot of times I've gotten really pretty tissue culture stuff from, um, from California, and some of the varieties they grow are really nice. And so if you're able to and are interested, um, try to find, I mean, I know a lot of times in seed mixes, you know, white, purple, yellow, the basic colors are what's in them, but white is always popular for wedding work. Uh, there's a blush out there that is really beautiful for wedding work. And then probably the, sorry, so I'm turning my bucket as the status is beating the camera. Um, oh, here's some more white status. And I'm, we're getting tangled up. But isn't that pretty, y'all? I mean, that is just really some of the prettiest white status I've seen, period, much less from local source but this color here is the color I cannot get enough of so this is peach or apricot and my stems back in the bucket and this is probably the single most popular color out there so if you're a flower farmer and you're wondering what color status to grow I would grow this like 10 I don't know what kind of a ratio, like maybe for every like 10% purple, 20% white, 70% this, or maybe some other blushy colors, like wedding kind of colors. But this color, people think, oh, it's just fall, you know, it's just a fall color. But you see that little bit of pink in it? It allows it to go spring, fall, summer, and this is really one of the most popular colors out there. Okay, so again, if you've got questions, feel free to type them in down below. So we have a question, where are you located? I'd love to buy from local flower farmers. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm located in the Nashville area and I'm trying to work with local flower farmers at the wholesaler that I'm the buyer for. And so I'm encouraging uh, farmers to bring product to me and we're getting a lot of requests for that, which I'm excited about. A lot of people bringing me flowers. And so far, you know, my biggest concern is when everybody's growing the same thing, trying to keep everybody happy and trying to find ways to increase market share for everyone. Because, you know, we have the customers coming in our building every day and we have the established relationships with a lot of people. And so it's really helpful to partner with um, a wholesaler if that is your business model. Now, this information I'm giving to you now is helpful even if you're selling direct to florists. And so I can tell you now that this color um, might, if you're selling to a regular brick and mortar wholesale or retailer, purple and white still may be very popular colors, but if you're selling in bouquets or wedding work to wedding florists, I'm telling you this, this apricot or peach color, and I wish I knew the name of the variety because I tell you, but um, is really very, very popular. Now you can see, and this might be one reason why people don't grow it. So this is a five stem bunch of apricot, and this is a five stem bunch of white. See how much bigger and fuller the white is in the apricot? And you might think, eh, this is not much bang for the buck, and this is. And what I wanna say is, this is still such a popular color that I would definitely grow this. Um, I would also say that maybe this would be better in a 10 stem bunch, just to give it fuller. The white is so full, this is a five stem bunch. I don't know that you'd have to go to a 10 stem bunch on this, but you might get away with a seven or eight stem bunch. Depending on who you're selling to, they might really find value in that. So that's the status they sent. And I think, yeah, that's the three colors that I got. So I'm gonna put this aside now. Now, I've, they brought me this one daisy. I don't know if you saw it popping into the, the frame there a little bit. 
and daisies, like daisy like this. Okay, so first of all, okay, what do y'all think? This has to be the most perfect daisy in the universe if you're growing the perennial kind of Shasta daisy-like flowers. And this is a very difficult thing to do to get perfect stems like this that a retailer or a wholesale florist might actually want to use. The issue is, is that when most people use daisies, you know, they're used to the, the cheap ones and it's hard to get the money for this and it's hard to convince people. But can you imagine putting this in a market bouquet or putting this in a design? I mean, I, yes, Tracy, I would love this too. I mean, this is, this is just a happy flower that is perfect. And it is the idyllic, um, is that a word? I don't know if that's a word. Um, daisy what people think of because the other ones we get from South America are just not nearly this perfect excuse me one second before I cough but um, this is a flower that blooms such a short period of time takes up um, a lot of space in the gardens weeding and all that kind of stuff I'm just not sure you're gonna get the return for this particular flower unless you are doing market bouquets and you need a flower this time of year to, to fill it um, Tracy asking how sturdy is the stem well it's a little bit wobbly but I will say that the stem itself is pretty strong this is actually probably the most perfect daisy I've ever seen grown in the universe okay so um, this is definitely a challenge to do but it's it's pretty it's pretty fabulous but um, again that's sort of my thoughts on growing daisies as a local flower farmer that is sometimes difficult another flower which I was really fascinated to see are Billy Balls or Crispedia and Crispedia again are normally sold in like a 10 stem bunch and Again, you know, when you are buying it out of South America, out of California, out of some of these other places in the world, they cut them kind of tight because they have to ship them. Uh, when you are buying them locally, they can let them open up like they were meant to, right? So I don't know if you can see this, but this flower is open and it allows this to be unbelievably bright yellow which is what this flower was meant to look like. So what I have grown this flower probably, probably not only because uh, the amount of product, cheap product out there floods the market so much. Um, but again, if my customer base were flower shops that might be interested in this or in a market bouquet, then I would think this would really be a great uh, addition because you can't get this kind of flower at this cut stage. Um, buying it anywhere but locally so just thought I would share that little tidbit on Crispedia um, do you like the flowers that have conditioner in the water that is a great question um, we put conditioner in our own water um, it really depends on if you are cutting it some crops really need it some crops you know like zinnias for example where you really need to put uh, like the chlorine tablets or something in there and some of these dirtier flowers so to speak that um, sometimes have die off uh, yeah you probably really should also some flowers it does help the shelf life but ideally if you're cutting these flowers like status and things like that and you're selling turn around and selling them so quickly um, like you're making a delivery the next day to flower shops or wholesalers or whoever you're selling to then um, I would say probably not as important um, but again uh, where I work we use it so maybe it just depends on the individual situation um, oh yeah so Crispedia make great boutonnieres so if you're a farmer florist now that's something we haven't really talked about but if you're a farmer florist and you do weddings and things this is uh, a great flower for boutonnieres for sure totally thanks for bringing that up I appreciate that um, okay so 
if you have any other questions, just feel free to put them in the comments. If you're a flower farmer, even if you're a florist, what are you looking for from local flower farmers? I'd like to know. Um, I'd like to know so I can share that with people or other people, you know, following this or watching this live later uh, can. So if you're just joining us, I'm just, I had some samples given to me from a local flower farmer um, that's new to our area. And I wanted to kind of show you the, some feedback because I get asked these questions all the time. So I'm going to take a second here and talk about, well, I'm going to send some waves out to everybody, um, that... Uh, a lot of times, you know, some of the more popular flowers that everybody likes to grow is celosia, zinnias, and sunflowers. So I want to take a second and just talk about those three things real quick. Sunflowers, for most of the time, when you're getting local sunflowers, um, uh, hey, how are you doing? Um, when you're getting local sunflowers, um, so many times, you know, people want to do I leave foliage on? Do I take it off? What my flower shops I sell to don't like it with leaves. Um, I personally like the leaves on there. I don't like all the leaves. I don't mind like maybe two to three leaves at the top kind of put on because, or left on because sometimes I feel like, you know, as a florist or wholesaler, we can always take them off, right? So you're doing a design, you can always take those flowers off. However, it is, um, sometimes in doing big arrangements or different styles of designs it's fun just to have that coverage or to have that additional leaf um, I know some people have said that they think that the sunflowers hydrate better with no foliage because all the energy goes up into that flower and not doesn't try to support the leaves and that's one reason why I would remove a couple but I used to sell tons and tons and tons of local sunflowers that had some foliage on them and customers loved them and the reason why I think they stand out more at a wholesaler or florist is because all the other sunflowers don't have foliage on them and it really makes your sunflowers um, stand out because it's obvious that they didn't come from South America. If they've been put in a box, like, or even California, if they're put in a box with foliage, it'd all be crushed and it wouldn't be very attractive. And that's why they don't do that. Um, but sunflowers, again, are uh, definitely a big deal and are a important crop. And now there's so many great colors. Uh, anyway, I just think that the season on sunflowers is just, and the, and the demand is just going to grow and grow and grow because there's so many new colors and it's just, it just has broader appeal, whether it's weddings, flower shops, market bouquets, um, consumers, etc. So, uh, again, five stem bunches is really the way to go. Secondly, um, we really need this local farming. I know, Mexico. And I'm surprised there's so many great pockets in Mexico, uh, areas that just really do well with uh, local flowers. I know the episode we did recently with Gabriela, um, who is north, I think north of Mexico City, um, she talks about all the flowers she grows. And so and a lot of people have gone to that, starting to grow some of their own things just to have these specialty crops. Um, next crop I want to talk about really quick is zinnias. Zinnias are really important because zinnias come in a wide variety of flowers and a lot of florists kind of shun them because they just don't think they have the value, perceived value. And honestly, they don't get the same value as like a dahlia does. Um, and I think some of that is because of the longevity of the season, the volume of flowers, but you can cut again and again and again. So that one plant will produce lots of flowers for you. Um, I also tell a lot of my flower farmers, and not everyone does this, it's, it just depends, but you know, a lot of times we do 10 stem bunches with flowers, uh, with zinnias specifically, and, and that's okay. I personally, and I always make this suggestion, would prefer if my flower farmers did like an 11 or 12 stem bunch, and that's because so many times stems get broken because of the hollow stems, and it, you can still pull it out, and then a customer can still get a 10 stem bunch without any issue. Um, definitely using things like the chlorine tablets and things like that in the water um, are really important because it helps add shelf life and prevent a lot of disease and things that a lot of times causes die off with um, zinnias. Uh, I love Florent zinnias. Yeah, Trey, I, you know what? I love them too. And one of these, 
hopefully wherever we move to next, we'll be able to plant some because I can't wait to try some of her new varieties that she has. Um, and the Xenia world is becoming so, so diverse and so um, incredible. I know, and I wish I'd had them, but we sold them so quickly. Um, we had some really cool miniature Xenias, which those usually I definitely want a 12 stem or even more 14 stem bunch because they're so tiny. It, it's hard to get the same value for but by having more stems in a bunch we can ask for the same amount of money as the bigger ones um but there's so many sizes and colors to me they are sort of like for especially those of us here in the south where it's so warm um it's definitely uh a flower for it's sort of like our summer ranunculus it's that small little perfect brown flower um, I don't have any here to show you today I, I'd love to and so but unfortunately I don't so maybe next time I will um, another flower I want to talk about briefly is celosia um, a lot of times with the wheat type of celosias or the plume type celosias again usually I'm looking for an 8 to 10 preferably 10 stem bunch on that just depending on how full they are um, and then on the coxcomb celosia, I sometimes, if they're bigger heads, five are fine. And if they're really small, like lateral heads, then I would probably say maybe um, eight to ten again on that. Um, and uh, oh, that's so cool. You want to, that's right, Florista. Thank you so much. Um, those zinnias were amazing. And it's funny too, because I have some farmers who will bring me zinnias in their assorted colors, which work great for some events. And some people bring me zinnias in straight colored bunches. And I kind of like, we kind of just try to have some of all of it because there are different demands and needs. Like if you're doing a wedding and you need white, well, you don't, you don't really want all those other colors. Or uh, sometimes you're doing something really colorful and it's hard to choose, you know, which colors to buy and those assorted bunches are awesome. And so, um, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you so much. And so anyway, um, when it comes to going back to Celosia, uh, there are so many size flowers, so many, you know, with the branching types of wheats and plumes that, you know, it's just, very different and I wish I could add some examples but I, I will tell you now that one of the mixes that I like the most is the Chief series and some places only sell Chief as assorted seed which is frustrating and then some places sell them by individual color which is what I would totally recommend doing if you can buy the Chief mix buy their specific colors I would and this is why so many times in those assortments, the hot pink, red, and burgundy all look like the same. And so then you have yellow, orange, or maybe a persimmon, or a lighter pink. And unfortunately, the way the mix ends up being, it looks like it's half red, which it's not, but it kind of is, and then half these other colors, which are also so popular. But orange is a very hot color. The persimmon is a very hot color. And I would totally try to grow both a, a big like 20% at least orange um, if not more like 30% and then you've got 30% between the reds and pinks and oranges and then the other 40% you can do a mix between greens and the lighter pinks and yellows and some of the other colors that are out there so anyway just kind of helping to hopefully provide a little bit of feedback when it comes to celosia now I do want to say you know I, I love being able to work with local farmers and talk about different things they want to grow. So like I showed you the daisy earlier, which is not something I would have grown, but this is seriously the most perfect daisy ever in the universe. So another flower they brought me that typically, especially here in the south, is really hard to grow, is delphinium. And delphinium, let me see if I can get this where you can see it. Delphinium is another hard one. It doesn't like our heat very much. But this, again, is the most perfect cut delphinium with these side branches. It is really, really pretty. And I have to say, this shade of blue, let me see if you can see it. It's so bright out here. It is spectacular. It's like, you know, in typical delphiniums, there's like the dark blue, kind of cobalt blue. And then there's the light blue that we are used to seeing, which is, 
is, is it like, not a Tiffany blue, but it's a true light blue. This is washed out. This is like a light blue. This is almost like a powder blue. And I honestly love this color. What do y'all think of this color? Um, and so I'm definitely gonna talk to her about this and buying this from her. The stems could not be more clean. And even these laterals, which is not something that, you know, are going to open up and be pretty. But this is such a strong, pretty lateral that this would be pretty in bouquet work even. So I just think it's, I would definitely think about growing delphinium, I guess. Even down here in the south where, like right, well this week it's been in the 90s almost every day. And so it's always hard. Um, here's a comment or question. I don't typically put bunches in sleeves for floors unless it's a delicate blue like dahlias but I've seen others do so this is just another thing to remove during processing right so I'm so glad you brought that up and so yes yeah, sleeves are one of those things that it's a challenge because uh, some flowers really like the sleeves uh, and I say the flowers because it protects them um, I know a lot of times like with this status I've been pulling it out of the bucket and if you just join me um, I was showing this beautiful local status and the branches do this and so that's really hard you go to pull it apart you break a lot of stems sleeves help prevent that but you know something else that helps prevent that it's just a loose extra rubber band if you just put a simple rubber band up here um, that will help protect your flowers like a sleeve would and help keep them from intertwining and then getting broken when you go to pull them apart. And so this rubber band has been doubled up a little bit and so um, maybe I'll do a little video on rubber banding but um, definitely if you can see like just placing a rubber band a little higher up um, I think will help protect that flower and you know cut down on plastic a lot for everybody and every and an expense I mean everything has gotten more expensive and to me sleeves are one of those things that are definitely more expensive and it doesn't matter if you use paper or plastic it's just expensive okay so another popular crop is cottage yarrow and um, this is a lighter peach and then and this could be the same variety it's just a little bit different and then this is a darker color both are great and cottage yarrow is one of those summer flowers that is wonderful in market bouquets wonderful in design work wonderful in wedding bouquets it is just a great great flower and if you were following in my stories around the week i did this thing trying to tell what flower was in these uh, and you couldn't tell necessarily unless you really were paying attention um, but they were miniature little water pitchers and so that I had gotten and cottage jar was the flower that was in it that I just took these little florets and put in it and some people thought they were zinnias and azaleas but nope it was cottage jar and just really zoomed in on these little miniature containers but um, cottage jar comes in a lot of great colors um, I if I'm gonna grow cottage jar if I and the mix is really great for the most part if you have the opportunity to grow specific colors again um, these two shades of peach are wonderful there is a light red that's wonderful there's like a strawberry color which is like a really pinky red um, it definitely is not a hot pink um, and it is another great color but these are colors that everybody wants in wedding work in floristry work and it's just really great and so I just wanted to share that uh, with you these are five stem bunches um, and you can tell this actually yeah this is a five stem bunch and this is a five stem bunch so you see the difference um, this you could probably get away with a seven or eight stem probably eight stem bunch this I would definitely do a ten stem bunch um, which kind of is frustrating I know as a farmer because it takes more product but that perceived value will allow you to get the price you're looking for. And, um, and, and yarrow is pretty, is pretty easy to grow overall. Um, but yellows, the yellows are harder. The cream, there's a cream that's kind of a butter yellow, which is about the most yellow I would uh, probably want to grow because uh, you get into the really strong yellows like this Crispedia and that's a little bit of a challenge as far as working with bridal work and wedding work um, with floristry work a lot of times in bouquets and things those like a market bouquet yellow works great because it's such a bright bold color 
Uh, let's see. Okay, last but not least. Um, okay, so we're going to go. I got to show you these straw flower because they're amazing. But I want to show you something new I found. Um, I was at a garden center l lately. And you know, I don't know if you remember last year I did a video. A little quote like real or something. With um, a variety of salvias that are like, um, it's the Mexican sage, it's like the perennial type, um, but it's not super hardy here, so you have to kind of be farther south or keep it in containers or take cuttings in the fall and over winter and then plant out. Uh, it roots really easy. So I found this other type of salvia, and at first glance, it looks like the traditional red one that you might be used to and tired of that doesn't make a good cup flower. But this one is called Rockin' Fuchsia. It's one of the proven winter ones. And um, you can kind of see. Uh, and there are no flowers open on this particular one. But what I wanted to show you, and the flower on it, I don't know if you can see it or not, is kind of a purpley, hot pink color. It's a very dark color. But the thing I like about it, like with the Mexican variety, the chartreuse one that we showed the picture of last year, is even these sepals that form on this variety uh, make a great cut. I mean, it does it holds up well, and the color is this really cool kind of greeny plum. Anyway, so we're going to plant some of these in one of our containers and watch them and see how they do, and maybe we'll do some cut stems off of these uh, later in the fall, because in the fall is typically when they're really like full and crazy. We'll deadhead those and share that later. So anyway, that's just kind of fun. Um, oh, I bet yours does grow crazy in Florida because I mean, they don't really, they don't ever have to go dormant or uh, go to sleep for the winter. They just keep on keeping on. All right, so straw flower. Straw flower, if you're a local flower farmer, is the gift that keeps giving because you can obviously sell it fresh, you can sell it in bouquets by itself. You can also dry it for extending your season. Um, I know this is, we talked about this a million times on the podcast, but I wanted to share that with you. This is some of the most amazing local straw flower I've ever seen. You can hear its petals getting crunchy. And so, um, I wanted to show you, and you might can already know after listening to this a little bit, kind of what we're talking about here. So this straw flower is amazing for its blushes and its pinks. I don't know the variety names. Um, I think it's a candy series or something like that that has all of these pinks and so. Um, with wedding work, this yellow might scare some people away because it's so bright. And if you're doing, you know, like a bouquet, uh, you're doing personals, if you're doing design work, that might, like I said, scare you away a little bit. But these blushes that haven't opened up all the way are a thousand percent amazing and perfect. And even drying them like that will ensure that you um, can maintain that color without the center. Look at the pinks in here. I don't know if y'all can really see this good but the pinks and blushes are insane. Does it open? I don't ever, that's a great question, Tracy. Thank you for asking it. It um, sometimes does look droopy, and I am not, like this right here is droopy, I think because it was just out of water a little bit, it needs to be recut, but um, the majority of these flowers, I don't like to put them in the cooler. In fact, we, even at the wholesale house, don't ever really refrigerate them unless they were really developed. So we leave them out. Our room temperature is probably like 55 degrees, so it's a cooler than usual room temperature. But um, I typically will just leave them out. Now I will say that if you leave them out, a lot of times some of these will start to open up, but uh, it overall, it, they maintain really, really well. There's not a lot of dramatic opening. Uh, of course, if you want to dry it, you want to definitely hold it upside down. So that way these stems will dry straight. Um, you don't have to worry about the drooping part with your dried flowers. But I think overall, isn't this a great color? I think it really is. Um, then here, it's there. Now, the color that is honestly the most popular are these oranges and these... Uh, apricot colors they are 
pretty fabulous. Um, another great question, how long does it take for them to open up? It depends on what cut stage they're at and how warm you're putting them. Um, like at this great stage here, I would say maybe three or four days. This is really far from opening. Um, at this stage, probably half that time. because you can see, it's already starting to show the center. So, and it also depends, like this particular flower didn't take as long to get to as the one with the really bright, bright yellow pollinated center. And so I just think that this is a, an amazing color. To me, this is spring, summer, fall, not just fall. And a lot of times I'm afraid local flower farmers only want to grow something like this for the fall. And then of course, here's yellow. And again, this is some of the most amazing yellow I've ever seen. Uh, it's really perfect and I love it. If I had to choose, I would probably do 20% yellow, 40%, maybe even 50% this color, definitely 40% this color because the blushes and the whites are great for everything. This is great for everything. Yellow sometimes scares people away or it doesn't blend with the palettes they're working with like these other two colors can. So um, straw flower is just is one of those flowers that I'm excited. I've seen a lot of this product now out of South America, and if they're growing it there, they're seeing a demand for this product too. So as local flower farmers, I think this is definitely um, a better uh, a crop for us to grow here and for us to sell. So anyway, um, that is pretty much everything I've got, and uh, I'm really excited. We are getting ready to wind down this uh, last season of the podcast. And if you don't follow us uh, on podcasts, you can listen to our episodes where we interview wedding florists, flower farmers, um, photographers, we different experts in different on different topics uh, relating to business and creative business. So um, it's it's always an honor and privilege to get on here and to kind of talk to you guys and to share some of, uh, of what we're doing. And so anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you're just joining us, um, I've been trying to go over some of the products I've received from local flower farmers and just kind of touching base with some of the things I look for as a wholesale buyer, also what florists are looking for and what colors were popular out of this. We also talked about some zinnias, lotions, and sunflowers. So if you're just following us, feel free to go back and watch it from the beginning. And um, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying the bounty of your local flower farmers this time of year, all right? Anyway, everybody take care, and you guys have a good weekend, all right? Bye-bye.